Hey there guys, it's James here from Kinetic Revolution. I want to spend a couple of moments today talking about cadence. Whether we're talking about cadence, leg speed, stride frequency, whatever you want to call it, it's the rate at which those legs turn over as you run. A lot of people will know that I spend a lot of time working with triathletes in particular, and actually rather than today getting into the, the nitty gritty of the, the actual technical side and the research, in fact, if you want to learn more about running cadence, then have a look at the article over here on the website. Now, today instead, I want to actually look at a very simple analogy that I use when working with triathletes in particular to take their understanding of what happens on the bike and apply it to the run. A lot of the time, what we see from triathletes and runners in general, to be fair, is quite a low rate of cadence, which creates quite a long stride length. Okay, people starting to overstride for a given pace. Think about it, if I'm trying to run eight minute miles, for instance, I need a certain stride length and I need a certain cadence to achieve that. Now, that basically means that I need to cover a certain amount of ground per stride and that needs to happen a certain number of times per minute for me to run at that pace. As I go quicker, my stride length needs to increase as does my cadence. As I slow down, my stride length needs to decrease as does my cadence. Now, from a, a point of view looking at this analogy, from a cycling point of view, when thinking about cycling and running, cadence is cadence. So it's a rate of turnover. It's a, a number of times something happens per minute. So whether that's turning the legs over when we're running or pushing the pedals when we're cycling, think of cadence just as that frequency. I want to equate stride length to gear selection. A lot of the time we see cyclists, triathletes who ride at quite a big gear, low cadence, here putting more stress and strain on their body than they may need to. Ultimately that can come quite unsustainable. The other side of things is obviously we see people who pick too small a gear and they're turning their legs over faster than they need to for the given pace. Again, less efficient. There's a middle ground. For any given speed that you're riding, there's a middle ground, a nice interplay for your body between turnover of the legs and gear selection. The same can be said running. A lot of the time when we're running, we see people who are running with quite a low cadence, around about 160 marks, strides per minute, obviously counting both legs, is quite common. Doing that, they're starting to run with a longer stride than they need for that given pace, slamming the brakes on stride by stride as they're almost bounding along, landing that foot way out in front of the center of mass. Again, just like cycling with that low cadence, putting more stress and strain on the body. The other side of things, obviously we see some runners who, they run around with quite a high cadence, really turning their legs, legs over very fast but not really covering much ground per stride. Very choppy strides, and actually their limiter in terms of top end pace would be the fact that they simply don't have the stride length. So showing them, again, how to find that interplay between cadence and stride length is really, really important. So ultimately, what I want to think about is the way in which you can, you can start to tweak up and down that cadence to start to improve your stride length. So, Chances are, if you're like most runners out there, your cadence may be that little bit low if you're starting to overstride. Try and just turn those legs over a little bit faster and feel how you're starting to land those feet slightly closer to underneath your center of mass, close to underneath your body, and if anything, you feel slightly lighter underfoot. Think of it, just like on the bike, as spinning those legs out. Give that a go, see if that analogy works for you, and let me know how you get on. Thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any questions, please let me know. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss any future running videos, all the tips, all the advice.